What did we learn from Big 12 Media Days and new Commissioner Brett Yormark's first comments on the job? We'll get to that. We'll also continue to get you ready for BYU Fall Camp with a look at the specialist positions, kicker, punter, and all the like. And, of course, 2023, the season opener has been revealed. Bearcats, Sam Houston State coming to Provo. we got all that ahead on today's edition of Locked on Cougars. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We are very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where, of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Thank you for taking some time to check us out by way of introduction. Once again, my name is Jake Hatch. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City, a call sign KZNS, working with DJ and PK in the morning as their executive producer on our morning drive show out here in the 801, as we like to call it, in Salt Lake City. And and uh, outside of that, this is pretty much what I do. And that's what I love is talking all things BYU. And let's talk a little BYU football. It's going to be a BYU football heavy slash Big 12 heavy show today. But let's talk about the season opener in 2023. Officially, BYU will open their Big 12 era in us 2023 against the Sam Houston State Bearcats. Yes, Sam Houston State, the recent FCS National Champions, technically the 2020 FCS National Champions, albeit they won that title in spring of 2021, just last spring. They won that national title. Uh, they will officially be making the move to the FBS ranks, the Football Bowl subdivision, the same level that BYU competes at in 2023. So their first game as an FBS debutante will be in Pro against BYU. So I think that's the first thing I probably should point out. A lot of you, I remember seeing this on social media, were saying, why is BYU playing two FCS teams? Because the second week of the season, they're going to host in-state uh, foe U- Southern Utah, who is an FCS school. Sam Houston State, they will officially be an FBS member. It'll be their first game as an FBS school as they take on BYU and Provo. And that is why it's not two FCS games to kick off. The other point to make here is that I'm actually okay with how things are laid out for BYU. You open up with two straight home games. How many times during Independence has BYU opened the season at home, especially two weeks in a row? Very rarely. This is a new era for BYU. We all know that going into the Big 12. Things have changed here. And I think Sam Houston State is a good team to bring in because not only are they going to be making that transition and in theory should be maybe a, a little less hairy of an opponent for BYU than some other teams, But they actually are a very good program. As I mentioned, they won an FCS national title. The good news for BYU is if everything goes according to plan this year for BYU, it could be a similar, uh, what do you call it, uh, an exit for guys like Jaron Hall and a bevy of other players making their way to the NFL after this upcoming season. If everything goes according to plan, let's say they win 10, 11 games, life's good. These guys are all going to capitalize on their opportunities going to the NFL. And You have a, a reloaded BYU squad opening their Big 12 era against the Sam Houston squad, who also, at least on paper, should be over well, overmatched, undermanned, use whatever terminology you want in that circumstance. That is why I'm actually okay with this, because if Sam Houston State, for example, had their team they have right now, so this year's Sam Houston State squad, where they actually have a very, very good quarterback, a, a pretty talented team across the board, but they're all upperclassmen, I would be terrified if that was what BYU was facing. Sam Houston State is probably going to see a number of those guys ex- have their eligibility expire at the end of this season, making that transition to the FBS. So that actually is an advantage for BYU in this. So, is it a uh, name opponent? Not really. Uh, Sam Houston State is in Huntsville, Texas, of all places. That, like I said, they're, they're, they're going to be the ninth or 10th FBS school out of the state of Texas. We know that the Lone Star State absolutely lives, breathes, and just... Uh, 
what are they? It, it's a religion. That's what it is. It's a religion. Football is in Texas. They absolutely love their football, and Sam Houston State making that jump. They will be members of the Conference USA, and that is, uh, I think, actually a pretty savvy pickup for BYU. They will have that second game against Southern Utah. So you'll have nice, two nice tune-ups. So, for example, let's say Jaron Hall is done after this upcoming season for the BYU football program. He makes his way to the NFL. Well, I think, in theory, Jacob Conover is the next guy in line to be BYU starting quarterback. What better way to get him settled into the position and give him those reps he needs as the quote-unquote guy for BYU than to have a Sam Houston State squad come to BYU in the very next week you welcome in Southern Utah. Those are two games that you allow him to get comfortable, and then you really get into it. You go to Arkansas, which could be, what, a top 15, top 20 team. You go to the SEC on the road. That is going to be the, the first real adversity I feel like BYU is going to face during the 2022 campaign. I don't want to dismiss Sam Houston State. I don't want to dismiss the Bearcats. I also similarly don't want to dismiss Southern Utah, but it is a fantastic way to introduce a reloaded, rebuilding in a way BYU squad if everything goes according to plan in 2022 as you go into the 2023 season and your Big 12 era. So that is, uh, I think, actually some pretty smart uh what do you call it? Scheduling strategy, I guess. Uh, Dallin Moody has been working as the special consultant on scheduling for BYU. He's now a, an athletic director for BYU, a senior athletic director, if I'm not mistaken, under Tom Homo's leadership. But that, that, that I think, was actually a pretty smart move on BYU's front. They also announced that their home opener uh, in 2025 will also be against Southern Utah. Uh, my hopes and dreams of the FCS games going away, well, they're dead. Uh, and I didn't really think that my one-man crusade to get rid of FCS games is ever really going to go anywhere, if I'm being honest with myself. But I, I just don't like FCS games. But in this particular circumstance, having a transitioning San, Sam Houston State coming to BYU to open the season in 2023, and then obviously, I think I said 2022 earlier. I apologize, but uh, the the biggest thing is is you have Southern Utah and Sam Houston State to open that season. That is a great way to get this squad that probably is going to have a bunch of turnover, get them situated, get them settled, and then you go into what will be ten straight. Power five level games. I, I Kansas is in there. We all get the the squad. Some of the squads in the Big Twelve aren't necessarily powerhouses, but it is power five level football week in and week out for the ten weeks following that. And that's something that you got to pay attention to uh, with regards to looking at. Okay, why did they add Sam Houston State? Well, it's just to get guys settled before they really embark on a brand new and really in many ways some unknowns with regards to their future uh, in the Big Twelve. So. I'm looking forward to it. I cannot wait, and it's good to know that the non-conference slate is set. Uh, we will learn in mid-October the conference slate, the original conference slate for BYU, and that's where I want to kind of transition to some Big 12 talk. Brett Yormark, the new Big 12 commissioner, spoke to the media for the first time at Big 12 Media Days yesterday. We'll let you hear some of his comments here in a moment. Uh, some very interesting things, especially on the conference expansion front, the conference realignment front. we got all that coming up in just a second. First, though, a word on our friends over at Rock Auto. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it is now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts that you would need. So I want you guys to give Rock Auto an, op- an opportunity to service you guys with regards to the auto parts needs you guys have. You all have been to the auto parts store saying, okay, I need X, Y, and Z part. And they're like, well, you got this option or this option. With Rock Auto... Every option under the sun is available to you guys. The best part is, is they, you'll save both time and money when using Rock Auto. They're a family business, been serving do-it-yourselfers for online for over 20 years, and the prices are reliably low for every customer. They got every part you could ever need, from brake parts to tail lamps, mortar oil, even new carpet. So if you guys want to give it a shot, get over to RockAuto.com. It's a very easy to use website. It's kind of old school in many ways. You'll you'll see you kind of point and click, select the car you you have, and then it gives you all the options available to you guys. It's it's a fantastic resource. I I've used it myself, my daily driver. I have a hundred and almost eighty thousand dollars on my daily driver, uh, not dollars, hundred and eighty thousand miles on my daily driver. Rock Auto is helping me keep it in running order because I want to drive this thing for at least a while longer. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right locked on in the how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. That's rockauto.com. 
Which NFL stars move the betting line the most starting July 18th? Locked On, the Locked On Podcast Network will give you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. That begins, uh, once again, available July 18th on the Locked On NFL channel, wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Very interested to see who are the top 50 impact players, at least according to our friends at BetOnline, where they're more uh, looking at the betting lines. What players would move betting lines with an injury, that type of stuff? Those 50 players might be different than your 50 players. So keep an eye on that coming up uh, next week. It should be an interesting series. I'm looking forward to it. All right. Let's talk a little bit about Big 12 Media Days. And I think the biggest storyline coming out of this is Brett Yormark's first chance to get in front of the media and really lay out what his agenda is going to be as the new Big 12 commissioner. He officially takes the post on August 1st, but if you watched any of the comments or watched any of the videos or any part of Media Day, he's been working. He, he has been working it, and he is doing his job. So I want to start with this. He had a very interesting opening, I guess you'd say, speech in many ways uh, to the attendees and also to the Big 12 fans at large during his introductory press conference. Here is part of his inter- introductory comments that refer to what he envisions doing. Uh, by the way, he, before he uh, mentioned, talked to the clip I'm going to show you, before he, we get to that, he did mention that coming up in August and September, he's going to visit all 14 schools, be why you among them to get a lay of the land. This is a guy who's been working in New York for quite a while, so obviously he's getting familiar with his new digs in Dallas and beyond. So he will be at BYU sometime in the next two to three months, and obviously be uh, checking things out. But here's part of what he had to say with regards to what he, what he hopes to do: conference realignment, how that factors in NIL, and more. I will work very closely with our member institutions to ensure we are prepared to seize opportunities that benefit our league. And if those happen within the first 60 days, we will move as fast as we need to. One thing is crystal clear. There is no higher priority than to best position the Big 12 for its upcoming multimedia rights negotiations. Everything we do must create momentum for these negotiations, as well as building the the value of the Big 12 brand and business. I am learning the issues facing the NCAA and the conference in real time, such as name, image, and likeness, the transfer portal, student-athlete well-being, considerations of the NCAA Transformation Committee, and the CFP expansion. I look forward to learning the perspectives of our stakeholders on these issues and more during my visit to campus. I've been actively engaged in realignment and appreciate the incredible input I have received from everyone throughout the conference. Exploration and optionality is at the forefront of what we are focused on. Anything considered must be additive and not dilutive. Sometimes the best deals are the ones that don't get done. Although I have a lot to learn, I'm confident in my background and that it's well suited for this role. And I'm excited to go to work. There you go, Brett Yormark, and very interested, interesting comments about him. He's already working in conference expansion. He said at another point during that press conference that the Big 12 is, quote-unquote, open for business with regards to conference expansion. That should be music to BYU and Big 12 fans' ears. He is going to be looking at all the options. You also mentioned the fact there, though, also you heard right at the end of that, sometimes the best still is the one that doesn't get done. He says uh, it needs to be additive, not dilutive. That was a, that was an interesting line as well, but I actually really like the way he uh, kind of went about things. Very matter-of-fact, uh, kind of laying out what he wants to accomplish as Big 12 commissioner. Uh, the interesting part about this is I'm not 100% certain that Brett Yormark even knows where Provo, Utah is quite yet. Uh, it's nothing against him. He's from New York. I, I get all – well, he's not from New York, but he's been working in New York. But he is going to – obviously embark on this tour of all these different campuses and start to get to know things. The funny thing about this is he was brought in to kind of think outside the box. Does he need to know who the starting quarterback is for Kansas State? Does he need to know what the scheduling dynamics are going to be for the Big 12 right away? Absolutely not. That is not what he needs to deal with. You also heard him talk about everything points to our upcoming multimedia rights negotiations. His job, number one thing, secure the most money possible for each of the member institutions in the Big 12. That is goal number one, two, three, four, and five on his list. He has got to secure the bag for the Big 12. Everything he's going to do is pointing towards that. That is what his goal is. Now, 
more on the conference uh, realignment uh, part of this during the Q&A portion with Commissioner Yormark. Some interesting comments uh, and questions from the media. We'll let you hear some of those. Here you go. Randy Peterson, Des Moines Register. Is the Big 12 actively engaged with the four Pac-12 conference schools that's being reported fairly widely? First of all, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. As I said in my opening comments, we're exploring all options, and we're open for business. And optionality is good, and we're vetting through all of them. I think it's fair to say I've received a lot of phone calls, a lot of interest. People understand the direction of the Big 12, and we're exploring those levels of interest. Nothing is imminent, but we're working hard to make sure that we position the Big 12 in the possible way on a go-forward basis. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Brett, could you give us reasons why it would make more sense for the Big 12 to grab teams from the Pac-12 other than the other way around? That's a great question. And again, I'll say that there is not a definitive plan right now. We're exploring all options. I can assure you that given the time I've spent with our presidents, our chancellors, our athletic directors, we are a very unified group. Bob mentioned that during his opening comments. It was one of the things that drew me to the job, the alignment that the board and AD community all have uh, for going forward. So as we vet out the possibilities, Everything will be additive, nothing will be dilutive, and I feel very confident that our conference is in the best position it's ever been in before. Bob is leaving us in a great place. Can I also follow up and just say, do you feel like the Big 12 could become one of these super conferences like the SEC and Big 10? I, as you get to know me, I don't really pay much attention to anything else but us. And I think there's incredible upside with the Big 12. It's one of the reasons, again, I'm here today. We have a chance to build our brand, our business, nationalize our conference in a way that hasn't been done before. And I'm excited to go to work and, and start that process. So there you go. Some of the comments from Brett Yormark on conference expansion. I, I think he is going to be aggressive. I, he obviously can't lay all of the plans out there and say, hey, this is exactly how we're going to go about things, nor should he, let's be honest, because it could blow up in his face if he were to do something like that. But you heard him talk about the fact that they're going to explore all options. So seems like the Big 12 is truly going to look at what expansion opportunities are out there. So I, I was very impressed. I guess my overall takeaway from Brett Yormark is very measured in some of his comments, but at the same time, he kind of hit on all of the high notes. And that's what you want to do. You, you want to win the day, win the press conference. I thought Brett Yormark did that. And obviously, good, good to see Bob Bowles be out there. Uh, Bob, as he mentioned, has left the Big 12 in a pretty good space. I, funny thing about this. The Big 12 maybe hasn't been as stable as it is right now, at least on paper, the way it appears. Let's also clarify that. It's not been this stable for, what, three or four years? So it's actually in a good spot right now. Bob bowlesby has got to feel fairly confident in what he did as Big 12 commissioner now handing the reins over to Brett Yormark. It seems like he's ready and willing and ready just to kind of take over and carry on and continue to build up the Big 12 and obviously BYU's futures, uh, their, their future as a university athletics-wise is obviously tied into the Big 12 it's crazy to think a year from now, BYU will officially be at Big 12 Media Day. I have hopes. I, I can't tell you guys this is going to happen, but I have hopes I can make my way to Big 12 Media Day next year. We'll see what happens. It, it, obviously, their finances to be arranged, etc. But it, it it's a fun time. It's cool to think about what uh, is just a, literally, in some ways, days away from BYU joining the Big 12 Conference. And I, for one, cannot wait to see the Cougars having that Big 12 logo all over BYU. Why not? Celebrate the fact that you've made it. Crazily enough, by the time you join the conference, who knows how big it is? Is it going to be 12, 14, 16, maybe 18 teams? Kirk Bowles, as you heard from Austin American Statesman, asked, could this be a super conference? And 
him and Ha pretty much from uh, Brett Yormark on that, but he can't. He, he doesn't know the future. I don't think in many ways. He's he's just trying to make his way through and figure out. Okay, what's in the best interest of this conference? Where can we attack and make uh, I guess make hay in many ways for ourselves moving forward? Very interesting stuff. But I, like I said, my overall takeaways from Brett Yormark savvy measured but at the same time he did hit on the notes i think most football fans byu fans big 12 fans all of us wanted to hear it seems like he understands what's at stake and he is going to go to work and put the big 12 in his mind in the best possible position it can be in and that should excite you as a cougar fan as just a a big 12 aficionado come on let's be real if they're going to be the quote-unquote back the pack that we hear from utes why not? Why can't we sustain the 12 if we're BYU fans? It, it, some good things, I think, are on the horizon for the Big 12. That, that I guess, is my overall takeaway from that. But it was good to hear from Brett Yormark, and we'll have more of a recap on anything else. N- new, newsworthy? Noteworthy? I, started, I tried to mix those two words together. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that on our Friday edition of the show coming up tomorrow. Uh, coming up next, we'll round out today's show with a look back at BYU football, another position group preview ahead of BYU training camp. We're talking about the specialists. Talking about specialists? Yeah, we'll talk about those guys coming up momentarily. Uh, first, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. Absolutely love this company. I'm a huge fan of Built Bars. I think they are the best tasting protein bars for my money. I would encourage you guys to give them a shot as well. If the Built Bar itself, the original Built Bar maybe is too dense for you, a little too chewy, whatever, give the Built Puffs an opportunity. They are a first of its kind collagen infused protein bar that's it's like a marshmallow. That It's covered in 100% chocolate. The macros on all of them are absolutely insane. And the best part is tons of health benefits from it. It has collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently. And the best part is they taste amazing, but you can also enjoy them guilt-free because they're actually good for you. They satisfy your sweet tooth while at the same time giving you the nutrients that your body needs rather than just chalking it full of sugar and calories that you don't. So give Built Bars a chance. Get to Built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your entire order. Once again, promo code LOCKED15. Get 15% off your entire order. Get to Built.com. Enjoy the Built Puffs. Enjoy the Built Bars. But the best part is you're also supporting BYU football via their name, image, and likeness agreement with BYU football players from Built Bar. So it's a win-win-win all the way around. We support our friends at Built Bar. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. If you have not done so already, follow the show on social media, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Search out Locked On Cougars. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, I keep pointing the wrong way. Click down here, subscribe for new uh, podcasts. If you're checking us out for the very first time, enable notifications, like the show, comment, uh, leave your ratings and reviews on the regular podcast providers out there. The funny thing is our numbers, at least for the last couple of weeks, uh, YouTube numbers versus regular podcast listeners, almost one-to-one. So it's like it's, it's a 50-50 split. So a big thank you to all of you, no matter how you're consuming this content. It, I appreciate it. Like I said, follow the show on social media. It's kind of where the show never stops. We're weighing in on stuff in live time. Locked on Cougars on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, or search me out on Twitter. I'm at Jacob C. Hatch. You see it right down here in the lower part of the window if you're watching this on YouTube. All right, before we go on today's show, let's get to another position group preview ahead of BYU training camp kicking off at the end of the month. We're going to talk about the specialists today, and that is the kickers, the punters, that type of stuff. The good news is on the specialist front is BYU is absolutely stacked at their specialist positions, at least on paper it looks like that. Injuries could obviously derail this. I could derail any position out there. But when you have Jacob Oldroyd, uh, Jake Oldroyd, a former Lou Groza Award finalist, uh, he is coming back for what will be his redshirt junior season. This is a guy who kicked in 2016. He kicked that game winner way back in 2016, the the very first game of the Kalani Satake era. Jake Oldroyd kicked the game winner. And crazily enough, he could be playing through, what, the end of 2023 if he decides to come back for another year for BYU. Crazy stuff, but the good news is, appeared in nine games last year was not his healthiest. He had five, has five field goals of 50 yards or more in his career. Uh, he made a season-long 49-yarder last year. All of his 50-yarders actually came before that. If he gets back to what he did during the 2020 season when he was that Lou Groza Award finalist, BYU's kicking games in a very good spot. Should he falter at all, though? you got Cash Peterman, who is a former prep standout at Chandler High School in Arizona, as well as Justin Smith, who obviously replaced him last year in four games. So you got three kickers. Jake Oldroyd is the favorite, but should he falter at all, you will, I think, obviously not hesitate to look at the other guys on this. The good news is at punter, you got Ryan Rico. 
Ryan is a big, big dude. Six foot five, 250 pounds. We've got an absolute howitzer for a leg. He can absolutely kill it. Number four nationally a year ago with a 48.6 yard per punt average. He's absolutely incredible. He's on the Ray Guide Award watch list for 2021. He's a two time Phil Still All Independent first team honoree. Pro Football Network Independent Punter of the Year a year ago. I actually, listen at six foot six, 232 pounds. So maybe he slimmed down a little bit and also grew an inch, but he is a big dude. But the good news is, He's going to continue to boom punts. He has got a, just an absolute uncanny ability to uncork deep ones that flip the field and help BYU out. So that's the good news is in your kicking game, you appear to be well positioned with both of those. Who will be snapping it to him? Well, there's a trio of guys who will be competing for that. Britton Hogan is a redshirt junior. He played in all ten, uh, um, played in 10 games in 2021, while uh, – Austin Riggs was the primary long snapper for BYU a year ago. They kind of switched off. One would do punts, one would do field goal, that type of stuff. Now there is a younger brother of Austin Riggs, Dalton Riggs, who prepped at Eagle High School in Idaho, the same alma mater of Austin Riggs. He joins the fray. Three long snappers on this roster for BYU. You don't see that very often, but you have a bevy of options with regards to your punt and kick game, snapping the ball to those guys. That is what you'll need to obviously pay attention to, which guy is the most consistent doing doing that. That's going to be Ed Lamb's uh, purview to make sure that he has these guys ready to go. Uh, I also expect that you'll see Caleb Christensen, one of the standout cornerbacks and a kick returner for BYU. He'll probably be returning kicks once again this year. And I would assume you're going to see Hobbs Hobbs Nyberg reprise his role as BYU's punt returner. I thought he really came on strong down the stretch last year despite some early hiccups uh, as a punt returner through his first year and a half doing that for BYU. But I think he returned. So The good news is on the specialist front, BYU appears to be very, very well positioned, and that should have you excited as a BYU fan. I know special teams isn't sexy. I know it isn't one of the things that you pay very much attention to. It seems like when a kicker comes on the field, everybody's like, all right, time to take a drink, time to take a bathroom break. But special teams is a critical component, and the good news is it appears the specialist positions for BYU, well-stocked, lots of talent, and they should be nothing if not consistent during the 2022 season for BYU. All right, that'll do it for today's edition of the show. We'll come back tomorrow, do another position group preview. We'll also recap what we learned from day two, the final day of Big 12 Media Days. It's quote-unquote talking season. So thank you once again for making us your first listen right here on Locked On Cougars. If you want more on the big picture stuff with the Big 12, make our friends at Locked On Big 12 your second listen of the day. Josh Neighbors does an incredible job making sure you guys are up to date on everything going on with the Big 12 Conference in 30 minutes or less. Get it free and available wherever you get your podcasts or subscribe right here on YouTube if you happen to be watching us on YouTube. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Have a great rest of your day. This has been the Locked on Cougars podcast. See ya.